Let's make N64 style games. Also ignore the fact that my audio literally sounds like shit. After playing a lot of N64 titles and recently making another video about how to get PlayStation 1 style graphics on Unity, I thought maybe I should also give this aesthetic a try. Even though both were 3D consoles back in the 90s, both had vastly different styles of graphics. They looked totally different. The PlayStation 1 sure had its charm with its very large textures and amazing looking environments. But the N64 had itself going something else, and that was pure raw power. In terms of hardware, the PlayStation 1 was a 32-bit hardware. On the other hand, the N64 was a 64-bit hardware, which was able to completely and totally utilize the current generation's 3D capabilities to its fullest potential. However, hardware wasn't everything. The way the developers came up with creative ways of making their games also had a huge part to play in terms of how your game looked and how it felt while playing. This is Sheep Raider, one of the by far most prettiest looking game I've ever seen on the, running on the PlayStation 1. Which goes a long way to show that hardware wasn't everything and what the devs had to do with the game had a lot to do with how the game actually looked. They had to work in creative ways to use the limited amount of hardware they had. One of the reasons why the N64 looked better was because of its hardware. The hardware was much stronger than the PlayStation 1, which caused it to have anti-aliasing and texture filtering, which was the first console to ever have that feature in the 90s. The PlayStation 1 not having any texture filtering or any anti-aliasing gave it its signature retro look. Even though it was a 32-bit system, it had a lot more storage and space to work with, and the textures were significantly larger than the uh, in the N64, which made the developers being able to utilize its 32-bit system to render out much more detailed environments and much more detailed textures. The textures, no joke, went up to 256 by 256. On the other hand, N64 games would only go up to 64 by 64 textures. A very good example is the Driver 2 game released in the PlayStation 1. It had fully detailed skyscrapers and building textures, which were significantly larger, even larger than some of the entire levels texture of the N64. Though the PlayStation 1 not having any Z-buffer to calculate the 3D space, it had to uh, use its CPU, which caused the predicts inaccuracies and those jittering effects being caused. The N64 having much more capable 3D hardware, not having to deal with all those issues that the PlayStation 1 had to deal with, but had a lot less storage to work with, a lot less RAM to work with, and which initially caused the texture sizes to be reduced to 64 by 64. Whew. So that was a lot to intake, but where does that leave us? It leaves us to smaller textures, less detailed environments, slight pixelation, texture filtering, and anti-aliasing, and standard resolution as 480p being our highest option. Materials looking a bit muddy and using a very washed out texture. Also having a very specific vertex lighting instead of the traditional modern day lighting. And of course the N64 didn't support shadows, so you might want to use a sprite for the shadow or just completely cut it off. Some fog, because both systems had fog, and some, some amount of lighting, because the N64 did have slight amount of lighting ongoing in its games. So utilizing all of those techniques together, this is what I came up with in Unity, a modern game engine, which is, I think I did a pretty good job of replicating that original N64 look. Okay, so this is nowhere a full tutorial and maybe I'll do a full tutorial, I don't know, but here's a quick rundown, so buckle up. I started by modeling the entire scene in Blender by looking at some references and just planning out what to do. I used a very small texture or a single texture for the entire ground and also used the same thing to sort of color out individual areas to define rock and grass. and then I just drag and drop it to the Unity engine and then I uh, exported the materials and selected a legacy vertex shader to get that mushy washed out look and as for the textures I kept the filtering to trilinear so that we get that N64 3 point filtering look don't set it to point like you did for the PS1 things this is just the way it's supposed to look and I also did the same for the trees I selected a legacy transparent shader and selected a lit shader for it from here on and it just worked out fine for me. Here's another tip to get authentic looking meshes out of your, you know, 3D modeling engine. Just select individual triangles or quads and then assign a different texture to them rather than creating the rocks and other areas separately. You might also want to use the same textures again and again and sort of like UV unwrap them 
like in certain spaces having like slight inaccuracies to get that natural look. This technique alone made the models and the texturing look much more natural and to make it look like that it really replicated the original N64 style. You can also use triangulate meshes in Blender and can also use some randomization to make the vertices look more natural. Since we're not using any shader to simulate jittering, keep the poly count of like the polygon count as low as possible. Make the rocks literally made up with like four or three quads, randomize them and reuse the same texture. That's literally it. To get the authentic look, go into your uh, 3D modeling software and for me it's Blender, just go into the object mode and just shade smooth your entire object like the uh, scene or the ground or whatever. This makes it look just the way it was supposed to look. This makes your scene look smooth and just similar to what it looked like on the N64. Then I went to textures.com to find an HDRI for me. And when I tried to download it, it said that I had to buy a subscription, so I did what any sane person would do. I opened up the inspector and grabbed the image anyway because I don't really need the high resolution one anyway. Then I put it onto Unity, made it a cube map, and kept the filtering to trilinear or bilinear, whichever you want. Then I assigned it as my skybox, and then I instantly changed it because it didn't look nice. And then I started working with the post-processing and with the custom fog shooter that I previously talked about. I, sele I selected the fog and made sure the um, environment looks nice. I also used some Unity fog to make it just look right. I also tweaked the environment colors to um, make it look more atmospheric and just match up with the skybox itself. And then realized that you forgot to mention a very important thing at the beginning of the video. Texture compression. So when you got the textures, what you were supposed to do was to lower their size. Lower it down to something like 124 by 124 or maybe 64 by 64. Don't go any higher than that, I would recommend. And also set the filtering type to trilinear and set the compression to none. And then just go ahead and hit apply. Set the trilinear filter. And this is what it is. You might want to change the size depending on what kind of texture you're using. It just depends, but 124 usually works the best. Okay, now that out of the way. I just set the uh, anti-aliasing to temporal and then I just uh, made sure that the jitter is set to full so that it doesn't jitter and also lowered the sharpness. Then I set the uh, post-processing. I got some color grading to make it just look nice. I didn't use anything like bloom or anything such as, such as ambient occlusion or anything. And also the lighting should eventually work because it's a vertex shader so the lighting should automatically work. Okay, almost at the end, I made a render texture and set it to 640 by 480 which was the standard definition. Um, uh, um, thing that the N64 ran at. Then I assigned it to my camera, then made a raw image and assigned the render texture to it. Then I hit the set native size to get the native size. Then I used the alt key, or held down the alt key and uh, positioned it towards the middle and then I just scaled it up to get that uh, side border and that uh, sort of N64 style um, you know, aspect ratio 4x9 or something like that. Maybe it was for wetting, I don't remember, but yeah, it just worked fine. That was until we just kept the resolution to Full HD because if we were to change it, it will just completely break the way the game looks. And turn off the warning thing, and for the final touches, I decided to change the um, filtering on this as well. You could keep it to a point, that's what I kept it at, but you can also use trilinear or bilinear, but I think point just looks nicer and it just makes a crisp look and that and blends between the blurry look just nicely and then this is a personal preference actually this looks nice and finally for the water i just used a transparency diffusator from the legacy and then just set the alpha to a little bit lower so that you can get that transparency look and of course the textures make it look like this and just overall fits perfectly with the aesthetics and this is what we came up with <sighs> okay that was a mouthful but yeah the results were promising and it just looked nice this is what it is Congratulations, you made an N64-style game, woohoo! Now subscribe to the channel, or else... So okay, one last step is to make sure that your game runs the way it originally did on the original hardware. The N64 games ran anywhere from uh, 12 to 24 FPS. 12 is a bit too low for today's standards, so I would recommend keeping the FPS from um, 23 to 24 or highest 27 or something, but 24 is a sweet spot that I found. To do it, you need to make a new script on Unity and then you just need to just type in some simple code, it's not that difficult. Make a new public integer and set the default value to something like 60. We're going to remove the update function and on the start function we're going to type in application.targetFrameRate and then we're going to set it equal to our frame rate integer value.
assign the script to your main camera, turn on stats and just to see if it works or not. And yeah, as you can see, our frame rate is capped at 60. And like this, now you want to just change the value from here, like 30 or 24, just to get what you like. But for the N64 style, I would recommend you setting it to 24, which is something that I stuck with. Ah, <sighs> finally. That's it. The entire project is available at my Patreon. If you want to support it and get the project files, you can do it from there. And thanks for watching. Blah, blah, blah. See ya.